The First Succession War ended inconclusively on so many key issues that a resumption of hostilities was all but inevitable. Primary objectives, both political and military, remained untaken despite tens of billions of lives lost in that acquisition. One such contested region of space lay along the Capellan Confederation Federated Suns border, the Chesterton salient jutting into the Liao realm like an eternal thorn in their side. Half a millennia of fighting between them had not resolved matters. Even during the long years of the Star League, the debate raged constantly, erupting into violence during the League's final years. Continued antagonism to this day over who has the rightful claim to the world will likely ensure that no peace can ever be achieved. Its location on the border guarantees that neither of the Great Houses will ever give up on their ambition to claim Chesterton, and it has become symbolic of one realm's might over the other. Many assumed that the devastation wrought during the First Succession War would prevent any of the Great House militaries from being able to muster the same kind of numbers as before. Certainly, none have ever compared to the incredible 50 battle mech regiments that Jinjiro Kurita led into the Federated Sons in 2787, but the other successor states had never mobilized more than 10 mech regiments at once. In the opening salvo of the Second Succession War, both Davian and Liao were looking to launch the largest campaign in their history, more than double any prior effort either realm had undertaken in a single year. By 2828, war had once again broken out along the Draconis Combine Fed Sun's border. First Prince Paul Davian was content to let his marshals handle affairs with House Kurita, as he had in his mind the goal of securing Chesterton once and for all. Operation Dao, which would call for a full 20 battle mech regiments to drive into the coreward end of the Confederation, while another 20 remained in reserve or launched diversionary raids, was scheduled to commence in February. The armed forces of the Federated Sons spent months redeploying to the Capellan border ahead of the planned offensive. Paul's grandfather, John Davian, had been prevented from launching his own campaign by Jinjiro Kurita's shocking invasion but Paul would not miss his opportunity. However, the scarcity of jump ships available post-succession war meant that moving his forces took much longer than expected. Dow was shifted back to April, then postponed again to commence in August. But Paul Davian wasn't the only successor lord whose sights were centered on Chesterton. Chancellor Ilse Liao had tried unsuccessfully to seize the planet 16 years prior. She and her strategic military advisor, Sandal Quinn, had formulated a plan to remove the Davian salient and rebuild the fractured commonality, Operation Kelt. The primary objectives were Chesterton, Demeter, Sanilac, and Tawas, with staging posts established on Olmak, Sonia, Tiananmen, and Ulaanbaatar to support the assault. So much of the First Succession War had been spent on the defensive for the Capellans, as the Free Wells League cut vast swaths out of their territory. But now that front was quiet, and House Maddox showed no imminent signs of resuming the conflict. The Capellan Confederation armed forces began redeploying across to the Davian border. To avoid exposing themselves to opportunistic Free Wells raids, Liao's intelligence agency, the Maskarovka, went into a flurry of activity obscuring the departure of the border garrisons by maintaining a normal level of traffic and communications in the region. Their Maddox counterparts, SAFE, were one of the worst affected by the First Succession War, and failed to notice the deception. An attack on Kwamashu by the Capellan reserves ensured that the Andurian province was only thinking defensively. With a far narrower realm to navigate, the CCAF could maneuver much quicker than the AFFS, in total, 16 battle mech regiments and two of the Navy's last surviving warships were ready to move against the Federated Sons by the end of May. For the second time in two succession wars, the First Prince was beaten to the punch. The first wave of attacks would take aim at secondary targets rimward of Chesterton, diverting attention from and preventing reinforcement of their main objective. Caught unprepared, Boeotia and Smolensk quickly fell to the Confederation, 
a surprising result for what was only supposed to be a raid. Similarly, on Baal's retreat and Baton Katos, the garrison was crushed by arriving Liao forces, while Capellan mercenaries conducted their own raid on Emerson. Only on Edwards did the Deneb Light Cavalry come close to victory. Regardless, the unit was tied down defending their homeworld, and unable to lend support for Chesterton. On June 2nd, the CCAP arrived at the industrial world of Cathil. Leading them was the Chancellor's daughter, Lorelli Liao. Unlike her mother, whose domain was politics, Lorelli was a skilled tactician and mech warrior. Despite the numbers' disadvantage, she was able to lead her unit brilliantly, though the Davian forces kept her raiders away from the priceless factories. The same day they made landfall, more troops were arriving at Demeter to begin the main thrust of Operation Kelt. The garrison, commanded by Damien Hasek, were quickly pushed into a retreat, little more than a battalion escaping from the encirclement. It was only when the CCAF made landfall across the border that Liao discovered just how close to becoming the victims of an invasion they had come. The Maskarovka was not the worst affected by the First Succession War, but every realm had lost the vast majority of their foreign spies. To prevent any sort of counterattack, Quinn's army continued to expand their raids, this time hitting Mendham, locking down another two regiments. The invasion of Sanilak and Tawas followed, and it's here that things began to turn ugly. The garrison on Sanilak missed their opportunity to strike at the clumsy landing the Tikhonov lancers made, and soon found themselves on the back foot. Their floundering commander, Kit Dubonet, drew up plans to employ chemical weapons, regardless of the cost in life it would have on the population he was supposed to be defending. On Tawas, Belinda's irregulars were functionally decapitated when their commander was shot down in the first engagement, and their headquarters hit by a strategic nuclear bomb. It was the first such detonation of the Second Succession War, and it signified that the Inner Sphere had learned nothing, and likewise, nothing was off the table. The battle for Chesterton itself commenced on June 18th. Two battle mech and six conventional regiments made landfall, their path to the world cleared by CCS Poznan and Prominence. In opposition stood two mech units and two mixed regiments of the March Militia. The Crucis Lancers decided to oppose the landing at the capital aggressively, preventing any sort of breakout until the Liao commander approved the use of chemical weapons to drive off the Davian infantry. The other landing went smoothly for the CCAF but they were drawn into a feint by the March Militia, allowing the deneb like cavalry to manoeuvre to their rear. The battle began to devolve into a stalemate. One final diversionary raid was undertaken by the Capellans to tie up yet more hostile forces at Orbisonia. Believing that the campaign would benefit from her presence at the front and willingness to do battle personally, Chancellor Ilse Liao made landfall on June 19th. Escorting her were the Red Lancers, and she had also secured permission from the ruling prefects to use their Prefectorate Guard, as she was herself a member of that council. These two elite units made short work of the defenders and secured valuable supplies from the capital city. Their celebration came too early, however, as the next morning the Davian assault guards arrived on planet ahead of the now abandoned Operation Dao. Until this point, the Chancellor's forces held a significant weight advantage, but now they were outnumbered and outtunned. The lighter Hazar's mechs were able to continually harass them as Liao tried to withdraw, giving the assault guards time to catch up. The CCAF again turned to chemical weapons to try and create an opening for themselves. As all three Davian regiments closed in for the kill, Ilse Liao made the decision to break off from her unit and hold the line while they loaded into their dropships. The Chancellor's guard stood beside her, and together they delayed pursuit long enough for 80% of her force to escape from Orbisonia. On June 24th, Ilse Liao went out in a blaze of glory, her company of mech warriors holding back the better part of three regiments for 38 minutes before she fell the first Chancellor to die in combat in Capellan history. 
In honor of her sacrifice, the Red Lancers have since become known as the Red Heart Guard. News of her death spread like wildfire. Her daughter Lorelei Liao, engaged on Cathil just one jump away, was unhappily proclaimed the new Chancellor. Understanding the disaster that was about to unfold, she ordered the immediate withdrawal of all forces engaged in Operation Kelt. Their conquests on Boeotia and Smolensk were abandoned, and her orders arrived on Sanilac just in time to prevent Dubonnet from unleashing his planned chemical counterstrike. At Demeter, Damien Hasek had managed to turn the rout of his Certus Fusiliers into a near victory, one that was completed when reinforcements arrived on the 30th and the enemy withdrew. On Chesterton, things were even worse for the CCAF. The arrival of FSS Nathan Duval and Pleiades coincided with the attack group's departure. Almost a third of them were killed in space, as were the Capellan warships, at the cost of only the smaller Davian vessel. Paul Davian rejoiced as Operation Kelt disintegrated before him. In just one month, they had driven back the largest Capellan assault in history. Unfortunately, those troops had fought well, all had taken damage. Regrettably, Operation Dow could no longer proceed. It was only after the battle on Orbisonia concluded, when the Chancellor's body was identified on June 29th, that the AWFS realized she had been present. Though the two nations were now at war, Comstar was able to peacefully facilitate the transfer of her casket back to Cyan in time for a state funeral on October 19th. Their motivation for doing so was to harden the resolve of the Capellan people, ensuring the war between the two states would not end quickly. In April 2829, the First Prince relocated his headquarters to the Capellan March capital. Despite the battering his armed forces had taken the previous year, he still had enough troops on hand to launch some sort of campaign against the Confederation, ultimately deciding on two separate offensives, with diversionary raids grimward of both. In total, over 17 AWFS mech regiments were involved in the 28-29 counterattacks. The first of these, Operation Rain, was aimed at the Sarna commonality, the defensive line was relatively weak here after the failed Capellan invasion. The First Prince dispatched six regiments and a supporting mercenary battalion in May, including two of the elite Davian Brigade of Guards, as the opening gambit for his campaign. By and large, the defenders folded quickly, with some planets changing hands just days after their arrival. The battle for Westphalia, by contrast, was a long protracted slog centering around a rare Blue Water naval campaign. On Farwell, the mercenaries proved more of a challenge than expected for the Davian lightguards. The 42nd strikers hoped to hold on until reinforcements arrived, but when the St. Ives commonality came under attack as well, it became clear that there would be no reinforcements. The ex-SLDF unit's honourable conduct in dealing with captured POWs during the battle for Farwell secured them safe passage from the Davian commander to leave the planet unmolested. This is an early example of mercenaries directly benefiting by adhering to the unwritten rules of war. In turn, those houses who offered fair treatment to the defeated freelancers increased their odds of successfully hiring them down the line, benefiting both parties. In later decades, Mercs would champion a return to the old Ares conventions. This is especially the case in modern day 3025, though a unit's financial health is often closely tied to how scrupulous they can afford to be. On June 7th, Paul Davian held a ceremony on New Certis for Damien Hasek in recognition of his service on Demeter during Operation Kelt, elevating the Hasek family to command of the entire Capellan March. Damien could not relax into his new role, as Paul immediately tasked him with doubling the number of military recruits coming from that region of the Federated Sons. Also awarded honours was Major Margaret Ross, though the difference in social class between Duke Damien Hasek and the mercenary Maggie Ross meant the two did not mix. Her actions on Tawas as a captain of Belinda's Irregulars had held the unit together after the shocking nuclear strike. Against all odds, they had managed to repulse the invasion, 
the Major became co-founder and executive officer of the new mercenary command, the Bloody Sons, formed from survivors of her old unit and those of Simpson's samurai. On October 27th, seven more AFS mech regiments moved en masse, heading for the Chesterton and Tikhonov commonalities as part of Operation Sun. To prevent any Capellan units redeploying corward to reinforce the line, several raids were made against the St. Ives commonality, involving another four regiments on each side. The largest battle took place on Mirak, though the 15th Dracon never participated in the meat grinder the Tikhonov lancers were caught in. Barely any of the regulars escaped the planet. The defenders on Sonya were similarly hard hit. Elsewhere, fighting was more sporadic, with the Liao troops withdrawing after it was confirmed that no reinforcements would be dispatched. The Bloody Sons had their first outing on Mira, but it proved as costly as the battles that had nearly ruined their old unit. Liao chemical weapons inflicted devastating losses, very nearly claiming the life of Maggie Ross. Damien Hasek ordered in reinforcements and gave permission for the aerospace fighters to drop a nuclear bomb on the Chesterton cavalry in retribution. Ross was evacuated to New Certis to recover, and while there, she and Hasek became romantically involved. In the St. Ives commonality, the strike on Tang proved to be the most costly for both sides, as the new Chancellor Lorelli Liao approved the use of chemical weapons in defence of her own world on December 18th. In retaliation, the First Prince gave his own consent for a nuclear strike on the Capellan staging ground, the second of its kind in two months. Liao soon learned that Paul Davian had prohibited his commanders from employing such devices. Only the March Dukes could authorise weapons of mass destruction, and only then in response to enemy WMDs. In subsequent years, an unofficial prescription on those extreme tactics developed between the two warring houses. Despite their fantastic successes, the Federated Sons soon had to realise that the time for just two houses focusing all their attention on one another would soon pass. A raid on Canard along the Outworld's border reminded them of the ever-present danger that Kurita posed. It did, however, net them an unexpected bounty. Recovered from a crashed dropship were its cryptographic decoders, and the MIIO worked feverishly to decipher as many DCMS communications as they could. It was too late to prevent a raid on New Aberdeen in the new year, but Davian could see a much larger operation was about to commence. Meanwhile, the Fusiliers of Oriente returned to Quamashu in 2830, taking it back for the Free Wells League. The Capellans also had to accept that their position on Shadar was untenable, and reluctantly withdrew in February. Until this point, a large-scale resumption of hostilities had been limited to just the Capellan Fed Sun's front, but in 2830, the Second Succession War would begin in earnest. Thank you very much for watching guys, what has been the third chapter in the Second Succession War series. Things have really got going now with the Capellans and Fed Sons declaring war on each other and uh, undertaking massive campaigns, bigger than any would undertake during the First Succession War in just a single year. I mean technically the, over the course of the war, especially over the course of the Davian counter-offensive against Kurita, uh, there more units were involved. But this was a much more concentrated, large-scale operation. For the next chapter, we're going to take a little bit of a pause before things properly commence in the fifth episode. And we're going to do a, a military overview of the Inner Sphere in the year 2830. I wish the figures that we had from the source books were dated a few years earlier. In, in the previous series, in the Reunification War and the Stalic Civil War and the First Succession War, I always made that second chapter in the series uh, an overview of the militaries. But unless I was going to make that first chapter in the Second Succession War, just way longer than anything else, way longer than I wanted it to be, shorter episodes going forwards is my plan, uh, I, I wasn't going to be able to keep that second episode uh, focused on the, on the military. 
Unfortunately, that means that the numbers we have have already got to take into account the losses sustained by uh, Liao and Davian during this last two years. And there's a little bit of a digression to stop everything and discuss it now, but it, it's the way it's got to be, unfortunately. I mean, either that or just cut this information out entirely, but then you're losing crucial information that kind of helps lay the foundations for the next decade. It is what it is. If you're not interested in me going into all the details and numbers of the uh, Inner Sphere militaries, you feel free to skip the, skip the next one. After that, we'll be back to it. Like I said at the end of this chapter, 2830 is where it all kicks off. Uh, every single front, there's going to be conflict uh, going on. Thank you very much for watching. As ever, if you've enjoyed the video, give me a like, leave me a comment. I'll try my best to respond to as many as I can. You can subscribe to the channel. There's 10 more episodes in this series to come. Uh, hopefully they will be coming out on a weekly basis. And if it interests you, I've also got a Patreon link in the description below. Uh, you can check updates on the project and see how things are commencing, as well as get early access to some of the episodes. So thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you again soon for the military overview.